If you've been a part of the Digimon Virtual Pets community long enough, then you may have heard about methods used to connect your VPET to a computer. Maybe you've heard of the Digivice Helper or the DCOM and want to know more about what they are and why people use them. So I wanted to make a brief overview of these devices and show what they are capable of. First, it is important to know that the hardware and software that we use was initially researched and developed by Bladesaber, a notable user at With the Will. Her work has since been adapted by other fans into various other useful projects. The system she created was referred to as DMCOM and is used to send and receive the binary signals that a Digimon VPET uses to communicate. Using this system, we are able to imitate an actual virtual pet for purposes such as battling and joggersing. In our community, there are three main types of devices that are used. One of the most well known is the Digivice Helper. The Digivice Helper is great because it's very well made and has a nice case protecting the circuitry. It also has its own app for Android that allows you to simulate various types of connections. The DCOM is a device that anyone can make themselves without having any circuitry knowledge whatsoever. You don't even need to solder it as you can just put everything together using a breadboard. Though if you like, you can still buy a DCOM pre-assembled. Lastly, there's the ACOM, which is a variation of the DCOM using far fewer parts. An ACOM can be assembled using just the Arduino, the breadboard, two resistors, and two wires. Since it has so few parts, just about anyone can build an ACOM no problem. But there are also pre-made versions of this you can buy as well. Right here, we can see the ACOM that I personally use. My ACOM is a little bit different because I have more wires and one more resistor than most people would need, but that's just because I was working with what I had available and was building it using a smaller breadboard configuration. The device itself is smaller than a virtual pet, and it has a couple wires coming out the side here, you can see, that connect to the virtual pet itself. To show you how the connection works, I'm going to bring up the Arduino software on the screen. What we're looking at here is referred to as a serial monitor, and it allows me to send codes and receive codes from the device. I'm going to paste this code in and hit send, and the Arduino will report as having received the code and is ready to now transmit to the device. This code starts with V1, and this means that the Arduino is going to initiate the connection rather than the actual Digimon device. It's currently sending every few seconds waiting for a reply from the Digital Monster version X. So I'm now going to start up this device right here. We can see that we have Jessmon X ready to battle on it. We'll go to our connection menu, choose X battle. We roll the Xi. Stop it at the peak. And then now the battle is going to try to pop up. We'll take our wires here. One of these wires is for the serial itself. The other one is for the ground. Right up against those pins. There we go. We can see the readout on the Arduino software. And we can see that the battle itself is initiating. Now Jessmon X is going to win this because he's currently fighting a Tokomon X. And Tokomon X is not strong enough to beat a Jessmon X. We'll go ahead and skip the actual battle animation. There we go, so he won that battle. It is possible to use codes that will always win and will always lose, which makes it useful for older devices that require a certain winning percentage in order to evolve. Now as for this code that we just received, what we can do now is we can copy that code, and I'm going to bring up another screen. This is the code converter. By choosing Digital Monster X Battle as our function, we can paste in the code that we just did, hit convert, and we have an output code we received. I'm now going to paste that into the serial monitor and hit send. You'll notice that this code begins with V2. This means that the Digimon device itself will need to initiate the connection rather than waiting for the Arduino to do so. We'll take our device yet again, go back to the connection menu, roll the Xi again. I am in debug mode, so that does mean I get all sevens right now. Stop the marker. We got a little bit of a low one there, so that's not great. Probably shouldn't have done it through the camera. And I will take those same two wires from before. And we'll put one to the serial pin. That's the front facing pin. The ground is the back facing pin. We hit the button to initiate connection and we can see it read out right there. Now instead of fighting Tokomon X, we'll see Jessmon's shots come back. And now Jessmon is fighting Jessmon. 
and it looks like current Jessmon isn't doing great against his uh, shadow self. Ooh, good thing he dodged that one. Let's go ahead and skip the animation. And our Jessmon X lost against himself. Now here's a cool thing that you can do. Well, after we heal this guy, of course. One of the features of the Digital Monster version X is that you can unlock a special area by connecting with a Digital Monster X version 3 yellow. Now this is a blue version right here, so it does need to be a yellow that it connects to. And the code that we received is for the blue version. But if we know what the version number is inside the code, then we can change that ourselves to get the version that we want. So if we take that same code that we got earlier and we paste it back into the serial monitor, but if I go to this third nibble right here where it says five, that five is indicating that this is a blue code. If I change that to a four, this is now a yellow code. So we're going to send this code and we're going to fight that one. So once again, we take Jessmon to the connection menu. I didn't actually hit send. There we go. Now I hit send. I hit send on my recording preview rather than on the window itself. So we'll take Jessmon over to connection menu again. Here we go, we roll a 7. You know what, I should probably show you first. We go to the battle area. We can see we only have area 1 right now, in the quest area. Can we get the autofocus to be a little bit less aggressive please? Thank you. Alright, we'll stop it again. Hey, that time we got a good one. And now we'll take our wires, serial wire up front, ground wire in the back, button to initiate. There we go. And now we're fighting Chessmon X on a yellow device. Skip the battle animations, he lost again. Alright, no big deal, no big deal. But now, you got sick again. Come on now, you could do better than that. Now if we go back to quest mode. We can see there's area SP. That was not there before. It is now there because we fought against a yellow device. Again, all we did was change the code. We didn't actually fight a yellow device. We just changed the code so that we're fighting a yellow one now. So you can see how a device like this would be really useful. If you were only able to have either the blue or the yellow Digital Monster X, then you can use this device to simulate the other version. Another good example is with Jessmon X's evolution. Jessmon X has the ability to evolve one more time, but only if it initiates a battle with Gonkumon X on a yellow device. In order to make the appropriate code, I'm going to need to know the evolution stage, the index number, and the attribute for Gonkumon X. Its stage and attribute are both the same as Jessmon X, so there's not much we need to do there. But its index number is 61, which we can see by going to the complete Digimon list for the Digital Monster X series. Now we need to know where its index number appears in the signal that we receive. Using this document that I compiled, we can see that packet 2 of the code contains stage, index, and attribute. Stage is 3 bits long, index is 7, and attribute is 2. So we won't be able to just edit the hexadecimal to make these values what we need them to be. We're going to need to actually convert the hexadecimal to binary first. If we look at packet 2 of the code we received for Jessmon X, we can see that it's currently B19E. We can type that value into the standard Windows calculator using the hexadecimal setting in programmer mode. B19E. We click on binary. We can now edit the individual parts of the code that we need to. We aren't going to make any changes to the first three bits, nor are we going to make any changes to the last six bits. Just these seven. We need this to become 61. We'll open up another calculator to make this easier, and in decimal mode, we'll just type in 61. This shows us the binary that we need to use. 111101. Since that's only six digits, we'll add another zero in front of that. By making that change to the binary, we can see that the hexadecimal code is now AF5E. So we'll change that accordingly in our code here. I'll change the version back to 4, since that is yellow, and we will send the code. We'll now go back to our device, go to connection mode again,
It doesn't really matter what the meter is for this one. Take our wires. Connect them to the appropriate pins. Hit the button. There we go. The connection was successful. And we can see there's Jessmon X. And there's Gonkumon X. Despite not using a yellow device, we are able to successfully jog them together into Jessmon GX. Hopefully that demonstrates just how useful these devices can be. In addition to the usefulness, they can also be used for a lot of fun. Generally speaking, we hold two tournaments a month that coincide with the semi-monthly hatches. These tournaments are done entirely online and are done by exchanging codes with one another. To make exchanging the codes as easy as possible, we use this software, Alpha Terminal. In Alpha Terminal, we can choose what type of device connection we're doing. In this case, we are doing Digimon X. We can then hit the scan button, and it will begin listening for a Digimon connection. We'll take our Digital Monster X here. We'll use our freshly evolved Justmon GX to go into battle. And we will once again take our wires Connect them to the top here. Initiate the connection. And there we go. In this case, a battle did not occur on the device itself because this scan code was merely there to get the code that it needed. It wasn't there to actually battle. Next thing we would do is we'd just hit this little copy button right here. And this would allow us to send this code on to someone else. The person receiving the code would then paste it right here and hit the send button. They would then take their device and do the same thing. The battle will commence. And we see that the code on the Alpha Terminal app has changed to be that of the code that we just sent. So we can now take this code and send it back to someone to do alternating battles. One of the great things about Alpha Terminal is that it's not just for Windows, you can also download it onto Android. You'll also notice that the codes look very different than the codes I showed you in the first part of this video. That's because these codes are encrypted, to prevent cheating by altering the code. Of course I'm sure none of you were thinking of cheating to begin with, right? Anyway, I hope this video has helped you learn more about connecting your Digimon to a computer. I've left a whole bunch of links down in the description, so if you'd like to get started with this, there are plenty of resources for you there. Among these resources is a link to the Digimon Online Discord, where you'll be able to discuss these types of devices with other people who have built their own or who have bought them themselves. That Discord is also where we hold the semi-monthly Hatch tournaments, which I hope to see you at. Before I finish up this video, I would just like to mention that yes, there was a piece of Digimon Virtual Pet news that came out this past week, but it wasn't a great piece of news, it was just that they were reissuing the Digital Monster version 20th in Japan, but that's not that exciting since we already know that the Digital Monster version 20th has been available in English stores for quite some time now, in various colors and for cheaper than Bandai is reselling it for in Japan. In fact, if you are in Japan and wish to order a Digital Monster version 20th, you are probably better off importing it as you'll get it for cheaper, and with a greater variety of colors. Either way, it was definitely not worth dedicating a whole video to. In addition, there are pre-orders up for the Digivice colon on Premium Bandai US as well as other intermediaries. So if that sort of thing interests you, go check it out. I'm not 100% sold on it yet, I'm reserving judgment until we get more information, so we will see how that goes. Anyway, that's all for now, I will talk to you later. Bye!